Gary at Fair Oaks. Sergeant Alden? Sergeant Alden? Yes? Oh, Jerry. Hello? Excuse me, sir, but I... I like to know how it's going in there. About Lee and Tubby, you mean? Yes, sir. And about Red Morrison. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I think your friend Morrison is going to get off without a scratch this time. Mm, What do you mean, sir? Well, it seems that Lee did start the fight after all. Did he say so, sir? Well, I suppose he was telling the truth, wasn't he, Jerry? Or do you think he was trying to protect Morrison? I... No, sir, Lee did hit Red first, but... Well, Red had it coming to him. Well, that isn't the point, Jerry. Whether or not Red did have it coming is beside the issue. Lee hit first and provoked a fist fight. I see. Then Lee deliberately disobeyed my orders to return to his room and stay there. So did Tubby Young. But they wanted to tell me about Splendor. I know that, too. But you see, Jerry, whether or not he wanted to tell you good news is beside the point. He disobeyed my orders and came back to the field. You've got to understand that discipline comes first. Yes, sir. I see. But... Well, what do you think they'll do to Lee and Tubby? Oh, I wouldn't worry too much about that if I were you, Jerry. Huh? I mean, well, what do you mean, sir? Well, I think the court understands pretty well under what circumstances Lee did what he did do. I think, too, that they'll take those circumstances into account when they pass sentence. And he won't be kicked out? I mean, he won't get too much punishment? Why don't you wait and see, Jerry? That session is in there. should be just about over. Yes, sir. I'll wait right here. Okay, Jerry. Oh, by the way... I, uh, I heard about uh, why you raised that jump a foot during the meet. Who told you? Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. I, <laughs> I didn't mean to speak that way. Oh, never mind, Jerry. Just let me go down on record as saying it was pretty clever. Now I've got... Oh, oh. oh, oh there they are, sir. All right, Jerry. Now you run along and see what Lee and Tubby got for themselves. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, sir. Okay, Jerry. I'll see you later. Hey, Lee. Psst, Tubby. Jerry. Hiya. Come on, Jerry. I want to get as far away from that room as possible. Hooey. Now I know what you went through during the trial. Lee, what did they do? Did they do... It was nothing, sir. Absolutely nothing. Nothing? Say your knees were shaking so much they rattled. Yeah? I guess you weren't as pale as a sheep. I was. Oh, boy. Oh, for the love of Mike, won't somebody tell me what they did to you? What'd you get? Well, Tubby and I have to stay within bounds for a week, and we each got ten demerits. Is that all? Mm. Ten demerits as to what I've already got just about fixes me up as the champion demerit getter of all time. Ten demerits and, and kept with within bounds for a week for what you two did? <laughs> Golly, that, that's almost nothing at all. <laughs> You're telling us. Well, how come? I, I thought they really gave it to you for disobeying commands. Come on, let's walk toward the doorway, and I'll tell you all about it. All right. My friend, you're about to be ordered to. Quiet, Tubby. If you'd kept your mouth closed on the day of the meet, we might not have been here at all. Okay, okay. For showing the school spirit, I'm an outcast. <laughs> <laughs> we'll walk over to the gym, and you can tell me all about it, Lee. Okay. Well, Captain Gardner and Captain Bogart just ask a few questions, and then they ask Sergeant Alden what he had told us to do. And wasn't Sergeant Alden swell? Mm, I'll Wouldn't say he? he was. Well, look, you two, uh, why don't one of you tell the story instead of giving it to me in episodes? <laughs> I can't tell where you are. All right, keep quiet, Tubby. Okay, I'm a mouse. A rat. All right, so I'm Red Morris. <laughs> oh, <laughs> go ahead, Lee. Wait till we get out the door. Okay. Uh, uh, go ahead. 
Well, I had to admit that I hit Red Morrison first and that he hadn't made a move at me except when he hit back. But did you tell them why you hit him? No, the lug. All he said was that Red made him so mad that he hit him. Am I telling this story? Sure, sure. Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, Sergeant Alden told us that, uh, told us to go back to our rooms and stay there, but that we'd come back against orders. Well, Red Morrison didn't come back, so he wasn't in on that part of it. Uh Uh-huh. But Sergeant Alden explained to the court that under the circumstances, he'd recommend leniency. He said he could understand because of the excitement and because I was bringing you good news about Splendor, Jerry. Uh Uh-huh. So you got kept with inbounds for that, huh? Yep, and there you have the whole story, Mr. Dugan, the whole story. Ah, you left out the chapter about Red Morrison. How about him? Oh, well, he got five demerits. Five demerits? Is that all? Mm Mm-hmm. He got those for being in the fight. Why, he should have got 25. (laughs) Well, he did stay in his room when he was sent there, so all he got was demerits. I still say that I'll take 20 more for another sock at that red tear. Pipe down, Tubby. The best thing you and I can do is forget the whole thing. Okay, okay. I'll forget about it when I'm talking. But in my mind, I'll always cherish the thought of past planting five on the Morrison chin. Wow, he was at a thrill. Young swings is right. It lands. Morrison is down. He's up. Young swings again and misses. But you can't stop him, folks. You can't stop him. He's in again. He's out. He, he... Oh, golly, there's Captain Bogart looking right at me. <laughs> yeah, does he think you're crazy? He's just walking away, looking back at you over his shoulder. Tubby, you'll never learn. Gentlemen, I was carried away by the enthusiasm of my own dramatics. <laughs> Someday you'll be carried away in a little white wagon. Yeah. You know, you can't always get people to believe you aren't crazy the way you act. Say, I've got an idea. Hmm? Let's go down to the basement of the gym and take another look at Mr. X. Oh, yeah, the old plane Mr. Linwell had brought down here. Okay, by me. What do you say, Lee? Mm Mm-hmm, right with you. It's inbound. Right. Here we go. Say, I, uh, haven't seen Red's roommate for a day. Wonder where he's keeping himself. Bruce Down Campbell? Oh, I guess he's with Red letting Morrison weep on his shoulder. Well, I don't think we ought to razz Bruce Lee. Oh, I'm not razzing him, Jerry, but, well, you've got to admit that he is Morrison's pal right now. I thought you fellas were going to the gym. You're walking right past it. Yeah, oh, oh, okay. (laughs) Well, let's go in. I guess Mr. Linwell's here with Mr. X. Ah, the classes in aeronautics start next Monday. Did you know that? No. Where'd you find that out? Ted Metcalf told me. Oh. He's going to be a pilot, you know. Yeah, yeah, I heard him say something about it one day. Go ahead, Jerry. Ah, a lot of fellas in here today. Mm-hmm, yeah, practicing basketball. Come on, let's go down to the basement. Okay. Say, it doesn't look as though anyone's down here. Mr. Linwell will be here. There's no light. Switch it on. The button's right by you. Oh, yeah. Say, there isn't anybody here. Mm Mm-mm. Well, come on. Let's see what it's all about. Well, what do you know about about this? Huh? Well, what's the matter? Well, there's not a soul here. Say, where's Mr. X? The plane? It's not here. Hey, look. There's the engine. Yeah, I see it. But I wonder where the rest of it is. There's crates over there. Let's take a look in them. Mm-hmm. Come on. Hey, uh, take a look in that one, Lee. Yeah, I am. Say, part of the fuselage is in here. Fuselage? What's that? The body of the plane. Hey, uh, and l- look what I found in here. What, Jerry? The, the, uh, what do you call the things that stick up out of the back of the plane? The... Uh, rudder? Yeah, yeah. The fins? Yeah. Uh, they're packed away in here. Say, those were out the other day when we came down here. Say, that's funny. The plane was almost all together that day. Say, you, you don't suppose, Jerry, that... What? Well, you don't suppose we're not going to have a class in aeronautics after all, do you? Well, they said we'd have one. Well, this doesn't look like it. They're crating Mr. X back in boxes. Looks like they're taking him away again. Yeah. Lee, I'm going to find out what this is all about. How are you going to do that? Well, I'm going to see if I can find Mr. Linwell. I'm going to ask him. That's a good idea. Come on. Oh, gee, fellas. Remember me? Well, get a move on, Tubby. We're going to see what this is all about. Yeah. Gee, Lee, if... If anything has happened to Mr. Linwell, I, I hate to think what'll happen to poor little Harold. Well, maybe we're just making mountains out of molehills. Step on it, fellas. Come on. Yeah. Step on it and forget the rear guard. One tubby young. Where are we going? To Mr. Linwell's cottage. Yeah, this way. Yeah. Up this way, we'll take a shortcut. Hey! Wait up, will you? No time, Tubby. I... Hey. What? What's the matter, Lee? What'd you see? Look over there, toward the polo field. Isn't that Mr. Linwell out there? Yeah, he's the only one around here who uses a cane. 
I'm saying maybe we won't have to walk so far. Mr. Linwell seems to be coming this way. Yeah, here he comes. Look, it looks like the, there's some workmen out there measuring off something. Say, this is getting to be a mystery. I wonder what it's all about. Search me. Uh, come on, let's walk to meet Mr. Linwell. Yeah, okay. Can't we wait here until he gets to us? Just a little way, Tubby. That just a little way will kill me. Hey, wait a minute. Hello, Mr. Linwell. Oh, hello, Jerry. Hi, Lee. Tubby. Hello, sir. Boy, am I glad you were walking this way, Mr. Linwell. These two guys had the legs walked off of me. <laughs> Why, what's the trouble, boys? Well, we were just down in the basement looking for you. Yeah, and you weren't there. No, I wasn't. If I'm not in one place, I must be another. <laughs> What's troubling you? Well, sir, we saw that Mr. X, the plane, was all crated up and ready to be sent away, and well, we want to know why. And what makes you so sure he's going to be taken away? Well, he's all crated and ready to go. Oh, I don't know about that. Suppose we sit down here on the grass, and I'll tell you all about it. Yes, sir. <sighs> well, I suppose I can tell a story in a very few words. You know... It seems that Mr. X is a little too large for his quarters. Huh? Well, I mean, why, sir? Too large? Oh, does that mean we aren't going to have him here? <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, take it easy. Mr. X isn't going to leave here now or any time. He's just moving into quarters that'll be large enough to hold him. Well, I don't think I get it, Mr. Linwell. No, neither do I. If he's all crated uh -oh. and now, ready to go... Wait a minute, what? wait a minute. Mr. X is going to take a trip, <laughs> but a very short one. Uh, see where those workmen are measuring off that spot out there just next to the polo field? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Well, that's going to be Mr. X's new home. Uh, what do you mean, Mr. Linwell? Well, we found out that in the basement of the gym, Mr. X didn't have quite enough room to spread his wings, so we're going to build him a hangar. And while we're at it, we're going to build some shops for the aeronautic classes. Oh, boy, that's, that's swell, isn't it, Lee? Oh, and how? Oh, uh, one more little item, boys, uh, Major De Davis wants every one of the cadets to help build it. And uh, whoever helps will be able to work off a few demerits that way. Mm -hmm. Now, it seems to me that two cadets who aren't sitting very far away from me could use that privilege. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, when do I start working? <laughs> well, uh, Captain Bogart is out there right now. Why don't you ask him? Work? Do you mean to tell me that I have to go out and work to get rid of some demerits? I'll keep them. Listen, Cadet Young, for once in your life, you're going to work. I, well, all right, okay. I'll work off the ten demerits. And later on, I'll be able to take another socket red Morrison. Work will become a pleasure. Lead the way, Cadet Phillips. <laughs> <laughs>